Let's look at how to use Google Tour Builder to create a Carmen Sandiego-esque scavenger hunt around the Earth for a historical figure. We're going to go to Tour Builder. We're going to click on Create a Tour first. We're going to give it a name. I'm going to do Who Am I, because that's kind of the theme of this whole thing. And You're going to add your name to it as well for attribution's sake. And then click the blue Create Tour button to get started with the creation process. We'll be brought to a screen where you can add some details for an introduction to your tour. You can add an introductory picture if you'd like. You can add a little bit of a, a description of what the story is going to be in this particular tour. You can choose how you want the lines, um, the path that uh, is drawn between points to be shown with the color or with the style being a 3D or 2D. And there's some other options, 200 advanced options. You can add uh, road labels if you like. And after the introduction is done, you can click on the blue Add Location button on the left. And now you're actually going to search for your first location where you want your journey to begin. And mine is going to be Esopus, New York, United States, because I have a particular historical figure in mind, and that is such inner truth. So click the blue Add to Tour button to add that spot to your tour. Now, this is where you add the details for this particular location. You can add photos or videos. You can add a start date. You can add important time periods to the locations as well. And of course, give some details about the spot in the text box. Now, for my purposes, I'm making something where I want my students to try and figure out who this historical figure is. So rather than leave a, a lengthy description that actually talks about Sojourner Truth, I'm going to leave clues to help them try and figure out who it is. Now, playing around with the actual map is part of the fun of the Google Tour Builder. You can actually get in there and move the map around and lock a particular view so that your students see something specific when they fly into this location. We'll get into more detail on that later. Let's talk about actually uploading videos and images here. So if you want to add a video or an image to your place mark, to your location, you've got lots of options. You can upload your own photos or videos. You can find photos on the web. And when you add an image, you can add a caption to it as well just by clicking on the Add Caption button. Now you can add up to 25 pieces of media for every location that you mark inside of your tour. So you can really do a lot of um, deep diving here and a lot of providing some excellent resources and primary sources. So let's get a little bit more specific on managing the map view. You. You're able to flip into 3D or 2D mode and rotate your view to find something a little bit more interesting. And when you find the, the proper level of zoom and the, the interesting look that you want and you've centered the place mark where you want it, you click on the blue lock this view button. And what that will do is make sure that when your students fly to this location, the view that you've selected is exactly what they'll see. When you're ready to make another spot, another place mark on your tour, just click on the blue add location button. We're going to jump into hyperspeed here. All you're doing here is repeating the exact same process you did for your first place mark when you find the one you're looking for, you add it to the tour, you put in your dates, you add your media. And let's show you how to add media from a URL as well. If you go to more and image by URL, you can paste a URL in from an image on the web. Just make sure, of course, that the usage rights for that particular image uh, allow you to use it. Now you can actually modify the place mark, the little marker that lands on the map. You could change the icon for that to be something else. So if you want to find something a little more interesting or upload an icon of your own, you can do that as well. Once you find an icon that you like, the blue OK button. And now let's add another location to our tour. Now one thing that is pretty neat is once you search for a location, sometimes Google will provide you with a name that it prefers for that particular location. And you can change that because in my case, I don't want it to say Sojourner Truth Memorial because that will give away who my historical figure is. So I'll actually change that location name back to what I searched in the first place and hope that maybe my students will be able to figure out where they're visiting. For this location, I'm going to play with the map a little bit more because remember, this is Google Maps. So Google Maps has the amazing Street View. And you can use Street View inside of your Google Tour. Just drag the little Street View icon and you are able to go down to street level and use this as the view that your students see when they fly into a location. So there I can see the Sojourner Truth Memorial statue. I can lock that view. So now when my students arrive at this location, they're pulled down to street view and they can explore on the street level, which I think is a really, really cool feature. Once you've added all the locations that you want to add, you click on the Done Editing button. And now we can actually play around with sharing this thing. You can preview your tour before you do that by clicking on the back and next buttons to walk through each and every location that you've added. And you'll see that the Google map uh, zooms and pans to make sure that it fits your place mark in its place. And you can see how your media shows up as well on the screen. There's a couple ways to share these things out, and that's going to depend on your final goals. The other way to share here is to click on the blue share button. You're going to use this if you want to add particular people to share this tour with, or if you want to find a link that you can put in your Google Classroom to share this tour with your students. So you'll notice that it's very similar settings to Google Drive. You can click change to 
to make it so that anyone who has the link can view it. And then you can copy that link from up above and paste that wherever you'd like to paste it. And we're going to use that in Google Classroom. So I've gone ahead and made an assignment in Google Classroom. I've clicked on the add link icon and I pasted in that link to my Google tour and I'm going to save that. And now when my students go to their Google Classroom and they see that assignment, they'll click the open button and they'll see a link to tour builder. Who am I? And if they click on that link, it takes them right to my tour. And if they walk through it, just like I did, if they click on the locations or click on the blue next and back buttons, it'll take them to the locations I've picked on my maps. It'll show them the media that I've added to those particular locations. And it'll give them the descriptions that I've added as well. And you'll see in the very last location here, it does drill right down Street View. Now there's some other things you might want to know about Google Tour Builder and that homepage. You can always access your tours by going to Google Tour Builder's homepage and clicking on My Tours. And you'll see the list of ones that I've created. And you'll see the ones that you've created yourself. There's an area for tours that have been shared with you by other users. There's also a gallery of tours that have been made public by their creators. And this is a really cool place to go and browse around. You could probably find some really cool things here that you can share with your students, whether they be of historical significance or just a great way to kind of frame storytelling and narrative. All of the tours that you create are editable after the fact just by going to the My Tours area from that homepage, clicking on the little drop down arrow next to the tour name and choosing Edit. And you can go in there and add new locations. You can add different media. You can change things up completely. Let's say you found a really cool video that you want to add to your tour. Well, you can do that. You can add a video either by uploading a video that you've made yourself. You can bring a video in from your YouTube channel, or you can bring a video in via YouTube URL. And when your students visit a place mark on your map that has a video, they'll see that particular icon when they click on it. It'll play the video in a pop-up window for them.